so we're live. First of all, thank you so much for doing this, man. I really appreciate you coming on this stream. Thank you for inviting me, bro. I, it's my honor, whatever. I appreciate you. And you know, I want everybody to know this is that I was messaging certain people that I thought would be very interesting and valuable for others to listen to, right? And, and you were definitely one of them right away off the top of my head. And you are as reliable as a good hip escape. Because as soon as I sent you that message, five minutes, let's go, bro, I'm ready. And I always like, yeah. me and you, we don't know each other very well, mostly through social media, and I've seen you in some competitions. But the vibe I get from you is you are a guy that will outgrind people, that is ready to take on shit head on. And you have this really uh, strong attitude that I think I hope rubs off on people today when, uh, when we're talking. So uh, I definitely wanted to say that in respect of you and as a big thank you for coming on to this podcast, man. Thank you, bro. That's a, that's a really, really nice word from you. Uh, I really, really appreciate it. Least I can say, least uh, I can say, man. So we were talking a little bit before this in the beginning about like the quarantine and the situation going on. What are you doing to stay active? What are you doing to stay, you know, in shape? So I got uh, here, I got a couple of, of, of pieces of equipment over here in my, in my apartment. Okay. So I'm trying to use the, that one, but right now I'm, I'm experimenting with a lot of uh, exercises, especially body weight exercises. You're trying new so, things. Yeah, I'm trying nice. new things. I'm trying to, and I'm trying to, to to fuse some of the things I know. Something I I, I saw I saw uh -huh. online. I got a very good friend here. He's a very good uh, in our gym. Very good uh, strength and conditioning coach. Give me some advice. So we are we are trying to to, to do something to be challenging and to be good for uh for, for the yeah. martial arts so that, that's perfect we should definitely get into that because man it's funny you say you're a guy that lives and breathes fitness and mma and you're experimenting with stuff imagine the guys that like they don't know what to do normally and now are stuck at home and thinking about their fitness because it's funny like before coronavirus, there's some people that at 9 p.m. would be sitting watching Netflix. And today they've got like the Rambo wrap on their head and they're exercising, <laughs> you know. Yeah. For some reason, confinement makes us feel like we need to be free and moving. So um, yeah. uh, we should definitely get into that uh, in this conversation. But before we get to all of this, I think it'll be nice for people to get to know you a little bit. It, me even, man, because like I said, it took a pandemic for us to be able to find the time. You're an extremely busy man. To, to sit down and actually have a man-to-man a -man conversation before I come to Oman one day, hopefully, and we can train together. So I want to start off by one thing before we get into your backstory, which is I take a look at your profile on Instagram and I see a picture of you nine years ago, your wedding picture. <laughs> so listen now, I've been looking at your Instagram and I see your posts for the last God knows how long. And bro, it's like Spartan. MMA beating the shit out of somebody on top of him in Mount. And, and then I see this innocent guy very innocent, <laughs> clean-shaven guy in a beautiful picture with his beautiful wife. What went wrong, bro? <laughs> <laughs> that's the other side of me, bro. That's the other ah, side of me. I see. I see. That's the one that's hidden. Okay, I see. <laughs> Deep down. <laughs> yeah, that, that was nine years ago. Now, okay. this year, I'm, I'm doing 10 years in marriage, which is a lot. Congratulations, man. Wow. Thanks, thanks. Yeah, I got a beautiful wife. I got a beautiful son. He's nine nine years old. Wow! Wow! And, uh, yeah, That's amazing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They're, they're my support. They're then my help uh, about in everything what I do. So especially my wife. You know how many times my wife has been in the in my corner, uh, keeping the towel and the bucket while I'm fighting. Oh, that's amazing. Don't tell me since <laughs> she 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 helps you with your camps. She helps you with your fights and she corners you. Yeah, 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 yeah. She, she helped me about everything. Uh, last time uh, I was fighting one of the biggest Dutch superstars. Uh huh. So uh, maybe you heard about against. Uh, he was a glory champion, Robin van Roosmanen. Van Roosman, so, he, he they signed him up to Bellator, I think. Yeah, he signed yeah. to Bellator. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. After after my fight, yeah. So the guy, uh, I got only my friend in my corner. My my coach was in uh, Chicago in uh, USA. Okay. So my friend was in my corner and my wife came with me. So we're driving 600 kilometers to Athens, Greece from Macedonia. And mm. she was, uh, yeah, she was cornering. She's keeping the bucket, the towel and everything. I love it. Next to me. <laughs> Does she have a martial art background as well? No, she doesn't have okay. martial arts background, but uh, ten, in 10 years, she, long, she learns a lot with me. So They're just she, hanging she, out she, with she, you, exactly. She deserves a belt just yeah. to be around you. <laughs> yeah. Like I said, she, she deserves a belt. She's keeping around 10 years wow. everything I have wow. to ask her. Yeah, I love she's it. She's a man. big support. 
I love it. I, I love to hear couples that are involved, whether in the same thing or each cup, each person in their own, but the partner is actively supportive. To hear that is beautiful, man. And like for you to be a martial artist, to know that your home is on your side going into a fight, that gives you some firepower, bro. Like that must feel good. Yeah. Yeah, I'm it's sure very it good, bro. It's very good. Even I got I got an old video if I find my son. Uh, 2013 shows he was around two three years old uh, i was live on the national tv in macedonia oh, wow. fighting it just he was uh, in front of the tv with his grandfather grandparents watching me fighting us we were better when oh, i come man. back at home and says what do you watch daddy how i was fighting he says yeah yeah the daddy be, beating the other guy <laughs> man that is that is beautiful like being a parent and having a son that's four years old now you know i i just imagine his exposure to the scene and, and how it would be and for your son it must be like you're a superhero man it must be for him like just put armor on him and i'm ready man he's my superhero so that's that's great to hear dude yeah so 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 tell me something now you're from macedonia am i correct yeah. and uh, did you grow up there or you grew up somewhere else no no i'm born and raised in macedonia it's okay. um, uh, in, a, in a in a in a city the uh, it's a south of Macedonia, mm -hmm. I'm 40 kilometers from the border of Greece. Uh, it's the second largest city in Macedonia. Okay. So, it, yeah, so I grew up over there. Mm -hmm. uh, I, uh, my wife is from there too, so I grew up over there. It was uh, tough times over there. Mm -hmm. It was a transition from communism to capitalism to democracy. So, right, right. So, yeah, so it's a little bit, uh, we are growing up in a hard times when uh, lots of people uh, leave jobless. Uh, fighting inflation and everything. So I grew up in a hard times and I, when you go up on the street, mm -hmm. you're either going to be a predator or a victim. There's no second or something in the middle. So, uh, and and the, these, these years are between like, which years do you recollect? Like you being aware and going through this, this difficult phase in, in Macedonia? Like what years? So that was, yeah, that was, I'm born in uh, 1985. Okay. And from uh, 1990s, uh, start when the 1990s uh, came, the uh, Yugoslavia fell apart. So yeah. uh, and, uh, lots of the parents over there, they are living in, uh, they're working in a state-owned uh, factories. Yes. So when all these transitions come, they close all the factories, like uh, they are unproductive and everything. So my, my parents, yeah, so my parents uh, become jobless over there. So there's uh, job seeking and you survive from mm. day to day, but uh, it was a uh, tough times, very tough times, till 1999, uh -huh. 2000, when something come along with a, with, a, with, a, with a private sector growing up and everything. And again, in Macedonia, 2001, the uh, war erupted. Yes. Uh, so again, uh, well, lots of uh, people uh, went to, to war, lots of people went uh, jobless, lots of uh, small businesses closed. and. Sure. Again, uh, they need a couple of uh, years to to recover. So mm. until I grew, I I grew up, grew up until I get married. Was a really really tough period growing up. Yeah, so pretty much so, until you were like 14, 15, you're living in like a war, depression, uh, economic instability yeah. situation. So uh, did you, what did you do? Did you uh, work at that time when you were in Macedonia? Where did you start your martial art career? Like, I'm sure you had a rough life, so starting to make sense when did you get into martial arts i get into martial arts earlier age i started when i was uh, like seven eight years old in karate there is the only karate and uh, and uh, some of uh, boxing clubs over there okay which was a very good karate and boxing club so i started going karate and my father took me to karate uh -huh. i started coming a couple of years in karate but i didn't like it so i told my father i they don't <laughs> the funny stuff was i told my father they don't allow me to punch and kick other kids so i don't want to go over there <laughs> i love it man you knew the truth from early on <laughs> yeah so, so i uh, uh so i told my father i want to go to kickboxing and um, he told me okay but my mother was very against that one oh. she doesn't want she doesn't want to to go for uh for uh she doesn't want to go for uh, for uh, for uh, me to get beaten up and everything. Sure, of course, everything. of course. So uh, when I start kickboxing and uh, and I start parallel with boxing, mm -hmm. so I I didn't eat at school. I keep my money from school just so I can pay myself uh, for for the lessons over there. Oh wow! So, yeah. So I start like 12, 13 years old. I start kickboxing and boxing parallel. Uh huh. And around 16, no, 14 years old, I got the, my first uh, amateur fight in uh, in uh, kickboxing. It was a low kick version. Wow, like, like a, a, 
local uh, kickboxing event? Yeah, it was a, a, like a regional couple oh, of wow. uh, cities, couple of clubs. Uh, yeah, because in, this, uh, in every city in, at that time, there is no too many kickboxing or boxing clubs. Like, sure. Like in my, yeah, in my, in my city was like one karate club, one kickboxing club uh-huh. uh, and one boxing club. That's it. In, uh, so we, we they, they were making like a, uh, some close city, like two or three cities, a close regional. May uh, gather themselves and make a uh, competition before they go for a, for a national level or outside. We got a lot of uh, competition outside, in, especially in Greece. Yeah. So yeah. yeah so uh, we that was one 14 years old, my first kickboxing uh, fight. Uh-huh. So I saw them. Then I saw that my my boxing technique is shit. <laughs> okay. So I, <laughs> So I start going uh, because they are coming from Yugoslavia. The and, uh, the boxing club was under uh, Macedonian uh, Olympic Committee. That was paid from the government. So the the, the training at the boxing club was for free. Mm, so wow. I start going for free at the boxing club so to improve my boxing technique. Boxing was for free under in Macedonia. Yeah, and uh, yeah, we got still in my in my city. Uh, the the boxing club the, the oldest boxing club is for free whatever who that's the incredible kids want to go. yeah whoever the kids want to go not everyone is like that but this club when I was training yeah and he got really really Yugoslavian Olympic expert in boxing really good guy really absolutely good. I mean yeah. uh, Yugoslavia was known for its sports and fitness yeah. it wasn't something that yeah. was just a, a side thing that just happened to be good no Yugoslavia intentionally focused on athletes on the sports organizations. So like you, you see so many people and children of people from that age that are athletic, man, super built athletic. And they have a good, how can I say, an association with health and fitness in your region. Yeah, yeah. The, the, the thing is, Yugoslavia kids, especially my age from uh, 30 to 38, 39, mm-hmm. 40 years old. And so the, those kids, uh, I know a lot of people, uh, kids, a lot, lots of my age, they are all around the world. They're athletes and sportsmen. Mm-hmm. We grew up, like I told you, in a, even a Serbians, Croatians, uh, Bosnians, everyone, right. uh, Montenegrins. We grew up in a very hard times, like I said, depression, inflation, uh, transition and wars and everything. So a uh, lot of the kids were were forced through sport to find themselves something. So An escape. Lots of the, uh, yeah. So lots of the kids uh, after 1999, uh, after 2000, they started uh, doing lots of drugs, lots of mm. heroin was heroin everywhere so mm. you either do sports or you either go on this side so which is the you. good side i get you man and and this also shows you why there's extremes like you've got the extremes heroin addicts and then you have the extremes athletes and it's very yeah. impressive man like there is some level of strength i've i've traveled around the balkans a little bit and i've trained with some people in in serbia and montenegro and there's a different breed of strength in your region because <laughs> the extreme like there's nothing to do right i wake up there's not much job opportunities. Let me go beat somebody up <laughs> or do drugs. So, so, <laughs> yeah. so the people you end up training with, they're killers, man. Right? So growing up in that environment, yeah. I'm sure it, may, it toughened you the fuck up, right? It, it had to have yeah. an impact. Bro, when, when you grow up in Macedonia or especially on the Balkans, I'm, I'm going to tell you my example. So okay. you have every two times, uh, uh, two times uh, 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 how you call, a uh, year, uh-huh. we chop wood, like a, like a, like a lot of wood for, uh, and helping friends and everything. That's our, our natural bodybuilding or our natural I love gym. it. For me, like a 14, 15, 16, 17 years old kid, was going and helping uh, guys uh, chopping woods, uh, digging holes, and sometimes sometimes do it uh, for money too. So when you grow up, you grow up hard. You're gonna grow up in a you know, lot of the, of the kids I and I, they grew up with me were doing the same. So right. trying to survive right. in these difficult times. So they are, when it, when you grow up on 30 years old, you got the power of 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 of, of, of a super exactly. you, you, Yeah. It, and it, and it just show, it, show, it shows you like you know the the adage that they say is like tough times lead to tough people right uh, and, and and man like th- there's no better example of it in sports kids and people who grew up tougher lifestyle not tough as in a bad thing tough as in they had to do shit because most kids these days don't grow up not having to chop wood not having to you know uh, walk in a dangerous yeah. street to get to school so it makes yeah. them a bit softer with this you have this added advantage of going through this lifestyle. It must have felt difficult then, but I'm sure now you look back and like, damn, man, I'm glad I went through that, you know? Yeah, well, like I told you, the, the things that I, uh, if I do lots of uh, good and bad things, uh, lots of mistakes like everyone. Uh, sure, like sure. I, so, 
So, but I'm, uh, whatever happens in my life in the, in the past, I don't regret anything because uh, that's it made me the, the man I am today. So exactly. they make me cover, make me everything, they make me whatever I am today. So I don't uh, feel sorry. I don't. I, don't regret I like about it. Anything. I like it, man. And, and that's that's the yeah. way. So, so so you get into this boxing academy. It's for free, and you start improving your shit boxing, as you said. And what happened yeah. from there? And from there, just uh, never never. Never, never uh, uh, get into do boxing a lot, but I, I start okay. continuing uh, doing to kickboxing. So I uh, get a couple of uh, fights uh, in uh, kickboxing okay. uh, until I get 18. Uh, and then I get a couple of fights in professional kickboxing. Uh-huh. And uh, yeah, so, uh, but uh, when I was uh, 18, I went to the army. And okay. uh, over there, yeah, so over there I meet uh, judo, I meet wrestling. Uh-huh. And I start doing judo. In wrestling so over there I, I start liking a lot especially with the guy i met about judo he was a lot of nevada guy who okay. likes uh, all nevada way interesting so, interesting yeah. okay yeah. yeah so he get me into a grappling sport so i start uh, liking uh, wrestling and uh, judo i still continue in training judo uh, uh kickboxing. kickboxing and boxing okay. yeah so i got uh, around i think uh, Six uh, fights in a uh, in a kickboxing K1. Okay. And uh, yeah, so after that I start parallel training boxing, kickboxing, uh, wrestling, judo, and uh, after a couple of years uh, I met my I went to a couple of competitions over there, not uh, nothing uh, serious. Local went to Serbia, went uh, to Macedonia, a couple of competitions, nothing. Uh, but then I met my uh, Japanese coach. He was uh, like uh, half Japanese, half. Uh, Chinese. Yep. Uh, his wife was yeah. He was wife was from uh, Macedonia. They came. They moved out from Australia to Macedonia. Interesting. And uh, yeah, so I met him and start. Um, he start push uh, because our uh, Igor MMA system, Igor Jiu Jitsu, is a system for MMA, but it's based on Jiu Jitsu. Okay. In uh, Sydney, Australia, he introduced me to that system and he start uh, training me Jiu Jitsu and MMA, and especially Jiu Jitsu for MMA. So. Wow. So I started. So you got the real deal from that. Yeah, yeah, real, real deal with, with with that guy, with that guy and my master uh, Igor from uh, for Igor MMA Sydney. Okay. Uh, I went to uh, to the uh, to the to Jiu Jitsu to BJJ a lot. So I started liking more and more the groundwork. This was what and year? Today, Ar- around what year? Sorry, uh, was this? 2011, 2012. Okay, okay. Uh, that was the the, the, the day when I. Uh, starting with 2011, 2010, 10, 11, something like that. Okay. I'm not sure about, yeah, so 10, 11, 12, that, that years we start training with him. So Did you compete was, in, uh, in judo or not much competitions in judo? Uh, not to, uh, I, I compete uh, in, in, in judo. Uh, I went to Greece in a junior uh, European championship. I okay. went to, if you know what, uh, Courage, it's a Courage in a European champion for seniors too. It's a, it's a, some kind of uh, uh, judo, but for, with the old ways where you have uh, grabbing for the pants and for the belt and things like that. Okay. So I won uh, in a European uh, Junior uh, Judo Championship. I won the, uh, uh, the bronze medal. And on a Courage, I won the, the bronze medal too. Wow, so it's okay. And that's an interesting uh, kind of judo. That's leaning towards jiu-jitsu, grabbing other things than the, just the jacket and the sleeve. Yeah, yeah. So, I like yeah, it. Uh, when you when you when you when you see the roots of uh, BJJ, mm-hmm. it's the same. Yes. So uh, yeah, BJJ originated from judo. So we we were we were teaching uh, we were teaching a lot of, of the of the judo way. We were teaching a lot of the judo way, uh, the Nevada, the old way. Yeah. So it's not not the sport judo, but uh, full submission only judo. So you start on the on on your uh, how you call on your feet. Yes. You need to throw your opponent and you need to finish him on the ground. Yeah, and you continue on the ground. Exactly. Like, this is the thing. Most people don't associate jiu-jitsu with judo, especially the non-practitioners. But judo has its history with newaza, which is the, let's say, the foundation of modern jiu-jitsu. It's a combination of Japanese jiu-jitsu and newaza, and then the wrestling that was introduced later in the 90s and uh, uh, early 2000s. Yeah. Yeah. Even uh, even uh, when uh, Mitsuru Maeda came to to Brazil, yes, uh, when he introduced to the braces, he didn't introduce uh, jiu-jitsu. He introduced uh, judo. Okay. But, uh, because uh, yeah, so because uh, uh, 
uh, Helio Gracie was uh, a guy who was weaker, uh, yeah. uh, weaker and if he was more comfortable to get on the ground, just to adapt the techniques from judo because still today, the same techniques, not the, the new techniques like the rubber guard, that they had something of that in judo too, but most of the, of the old, uh, uh, how you call basic techniques in jiu-jitsu, what you uh, rely, it's, uh, it's uh, came in from that thing, from judo. So he teach them that they just improve the, the system of judo and Vaza for their own needs, and they, mm -hmm. they never call it BJJ, they call it just Gracie Jiu-Jitsu till today. Right, exactly. But you know, it's very interesting you say this because, you know, today in Jiu-Jitsu, as advanced as it got, Judo is available to everybody and Jiu-Jitsu is available to everybody. You find the stronger build guys, the, the more athletic guys, tend to incorporate more takedown Judo into their Jiu-Jitsu game. And the guys that yeah. maybe I would associate closer to Helio Gracie are more guard game and pulling to the ground. So it's interesting that even yeah. since back then, when Mitsuya Maeda was in Brazil, that impact shows you the versatility of Jiu-Jitsu. Because Judo and these kind of sports, I really honestly feel that you either start it when you're young and your body builds around it, or if you join it when you're older, you have to have an athletic base to be successful in Judo. Uh, versus, uh, do, do, do you agree with I, me or not on that? Uh, no, uh, in judo, in judo like in jiu-jitsu, uh, mm. technique beats everything. No matter how For sure. strong you, are, yeah. No matter how strong you are, no yeah. matter what you're gonna. We have a saying: No matter how strong you are, yes. if I have a good technique, you're gonna fly. In and you, judo, that's it. And you don't think some of the abuse the body takes in judo is a little bit higher than jiu-jitsu with the slams, with the falls, the awkward falls on the ground? Like this is where I think the athletic body survives longer in judo than the guy that's not very athletic getting into judo, right? The, the 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 judo falls it's uh, yeah it is a lot of uh, falls mm. uh, but uh, like I said if you get used to it you get slammed on every training like 200, 300 times that's yeah, it you, uh, that's then, it then yeah no matter when you go to train on competition you you land perfectly so every time um, you have you need to have a strong body right but uh, it's not that uh, it's not that uh, hard like you you see on the on the video also sure. on a competition when you experience all of that. Uh, sure. When you fall, even when he throws you a full power on a competition, mm. when you land, you land, you don't think too much, you land, uh, you have perfect uh, ukemi, like a perfect uh, falling right. technique, you can't feel too much. It is, no, sometimes happen, you're just going to grab you on the side, you're going to fall, you're going to not position your hand, that's yeah. how the injuries uh, happen. But most of the time, nothing happens, you're not going to even feel the fall. I think it's interesting for jiu-jitsu guys, like exclusive jiu-jitsu guys, to consider what you're saying and actually taking up ju judo to an extent, not for the sake of just the judo, for the sake of not getting injured if you get thrown in jiu-jitsu, like to practice that feeling, being comfortable with that, to recuperate quickly. Because a lot of people, when they get thrown in their jiu-jitsu competition and they don't have a judo background, it throws them the fuck off their game. They yeah, panic. I have seen that one. Yeah, I have seen that one too a lot. Yeah. I competed in uh, in uh, in Dubai in Jiu Jitsu on mm -hmm. Dubai Pro. Right. I competed in a one on uh, fight night in Kuwait on grappling and Jiu Jitsu too and mm -hmm. Judo too over there. Uh, the thing is, uh, when you when you combine mm -hmm. when you combine good Jiu Jitsu with good Judo and good wrestling, oh, yeah. you are unbeaten. You're a killer. So whatever, yeah, <laughs> whatever I won cup, uh, I won uh, in Dubai Pro yeah. without any preparation. Yeah. So I won a Gi and no Gi uh, silver medal. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, in that time here, we didn't have any BJJ coach. So I didn't prepare at all. Just uh, grabbed the car and went to Dubai. Yeah. Uh, I won, like I said, Gi and no Gi two silvers. I lost from the same guy from Colombia twice in the same finals with, 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 the, with the same guy. This was 2018. So, no. Uh, yeah, 2018. I was in the same competition. I was there, like yeah. we're a different division. I saw you. <laughs> we said hello in that competition. Uh, yeah. But uh, I got silver in that one as well. Um, but I, that, that's one of the first times we bumped into each other. And then after that, yeah. I saw you on social media. Somebody reposted something you did. And that's since then I started following you. Like that was our contact point, the Dubai pros. Yeah. So over there, I went without any, pro any, any preparation just to put my gear and just went Just what there. you know. Just mm. went over Wow. Yeah, the, the first the first two fights I win with judo, throw, take down. I love it. Point, keep it on the ground, and then you work slowly. Basics, uh, how you call it? side control, full mount, right? Simple, you win on point. Uh, 
you say the uh, same thing I did in, in, in Kuwait. Uh, so every fight in Jiu Jitsu starts on the feet. So uh, I, I, when, the, when the people don't pull guard, you know, if, if they pull, don't pull guard in 10, 15 seconds, Exactly. Their mind. <laughs> exactly. It's it's funny you say this. You, you remind me of a very very funny situation. Um, it was my second competition, and it was I believe in Fujira. So uh, I, wow. I get into the competition. And you know how like sometimes it gets crazy delayed until your fight starts. Sometimes like five hours. Okay. So I'm sitting in the warm up area, and you know you get that itch to check the the the, the brackets to see who you're fighting. You, you uh-huh. just you want to open you see you want to see what they look like <laughs> to mentally prepare yourself. So I open at this guy. I read his name. I'm like fuck it, let me go on Facebook. I open Facebook, type his name. I look. I see shit. Egyptian gold medalist judo. I'm like fuck, man. <laughs> Why? Why does this have to be my first fight? And in my mind, like I I had things I'm preparing and drilling. I changed my entire strategy. It was a bad idea, but I get into that fight and literally, man, within seconds I pull guard because I don't have a judo background. You know, yeah. and that was early in blue belt, and it made me need to work on my my stand up. I won that fight uh, by advantages. Pulled guard. He had an incredible base. I couldn't sweep his ass f- to save my life, but I got a lot of advantages built up from it. But it's like to what you say, especially on the earlier side of jujitsu, white belt, blue belt, even purple belt. I would say if your judo game is strong, you're gonna give hell to people. It, yeah, it, it's yeah, it's yeah. a real challenge. Yeah, yeah. I even even uh, I told I, I I always encourage everyone uh, who is training jiu-jitsu because I love jiu-jitsu and uh, uh, later I don't have uh, too much time to train jiu-jitsu. It's a lot of uh, training and classes yeah. and everything. But uh, when I have the time, I always train jiu-jitsu. So like I told you, I love it, and I always encourage uh, people uh, nice. combine all of these three: wrestling, judo, and jiu-jitsu. Of course, take downs, especially. Uh, no need of only one or two takedowns, one or two throws, nothing else. Just uh, take the, those uh, throws and uh, to, to perfection, and yes. it will be it will be okay. I like that piece of advice. Like instead of people diving into every single throw there is in judo, to really pick two and make them their solid go tos, like better than other people. I like that. Yeah, that's that's. I'm I'm telling you, I I like I told you, I I I won two medals. Uh, First couple of fights just uh, just throws. Uh-huh. I was also in the Kuwait on one. I uh, there was not too many competitors. It was uh, it was a very nice competition. First time they fused every belt against every belt. Oh. So blue belt against purple against brown. I was madness. I like it. So I get against a uh, purple belt guy. First thing, first thing, uh, Kataguruma. You know, like a fireman carry in, the, in wrestling. Just throw him right away. Oh fuck. Uh, <laughs> Oh shit, so, poor guy, man. He's probably like, you know, with his wife and kids coming to just try out a competition. <laughs> he ends up with you. <laughs> okay. So like I told you, sir, when, when uh, one gold, one silver, nice, uh, well, they are gold nice. in uh, no gi and uh, silver in gi. So uh, what's... what's uh, are you comfortable in gi? Like, do you like gi or you prefer no gi? I like, I like, I like, I like. Okay. I prefer, I train mostly, uh-huh. mostly on Round, I train no gi, but I I like it, the, the the gi. I love the gi. So the gi, it's a, it's a different game, much much different. Game. A lot of people, there's this argument in jujitsu community. It's what's more realistic, no gi or gi. And I'm on the side that gi is more realistic. I want to see where you stand on this. Yeah, uh, realistic. I don't know, but if you, I I have saying like this: if you don't train in gi, you mm-hmm. don't know no gi. So that's it. I love it. So, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, the gi, the, the gi, the, the gi, if you train with a gi, I, mm. for my, I, uh, because the people told me, uh, don't train with a gi while you're preparing for MMA fights and things like that. Mm. When I train with a gi, especially the bigger guys than me, and it's a lot of pullings and everything, I love it. My strength is coming to another, to another level. Yeah, so, you know how to leverage your strength. Exactly. Yeah. So, yeah. So, I I always tell uh, even the MMA fighters who are training constantly no gi for MMA uh, mm-hmm. fight always train gi too. Yeah, exactly. I mean, like it yeah. slows down the game a little bit, which makes you yeah. more technical. Versus no gi, no gi is great because it makes you a scrambling, quick, athletic grappler, but it makes you lack clean technique. Gi slows it down to allow you to adapt and build your clean technique to become tight in no gi. You know, but yeah, when, yeah. but yeah. when it when it comes to like the, the closeness of gi versus no gi for a street fight, which one do you think is more realistic? 
Just curious. For a street fight? Yes, for a street fight. Uh, it's an old, diff different, no different, uh, no gi, uh, definitely, because uh, sometimes you can use, but you, you, you can't uh, do the same with a t-shirt or, right. or a jacket in a, on a street. Right. But if you paint, uh, if you know your no gi techniques on the street, it's easy to choke someone or break his arm or break his leg, whatever. I like I, it. I'm a, yes, I'm a 10 years in a security business. Uh-huh. Uh, yeah, so uh, uh, I it have been in a lot. In which country was this security business? In Macedonia. Oh, in Macedonia. shit. So, <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> I've been on every level of security business from a, a, um, on an armed guard to a uh, doorsman, to a high-risk security, money transportation, gold, VIPs, close protection, everything. You're around fighting all your life, bro. You're living and breathing this. <laughs> yeah, so... Uh, any, any crazy uh, stories you can share with us from this uh, security lifestyle? A lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of... Uh, Does something come uh, to mind that like reminds you of like, oh shit, I'm glad I'm done with that? <laughs> My eye, I, I was, uh, when I was uh, uh, for the last uh, couple of years before I came to Oman 2017, to the last day I was working as a high security money, especially money transportation all around Macedonia. Oh my God, that uh, must be terrifying. That's terrifying, <laughs> yeah. bro. Money Not security in Macedonia during an economic crisis. What are you talking about, bro? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, uh, wasn't that uh, bad. There was okay. a, so if you can't you can't say there wasn't a lot of uh, uh, three of my colleagues from uh, different companies uh -huh. been shot uh, and uh, died. Oh my god! So three of them we got casualties over there. So uh, was a was a couple of uh, like this situation. Lots of especially in the in the in the capital city. So we were worrying from my city uh, transporting money to the capital and back from the national bank and everything. Okay. So yeah, because the Kosovo border with the Albanians was very close, so they mm. hit and run. They, oh my they god! They don't. Yeah. They don't say, "Give me the money or whatever." Four or five guys with AK-47 just shoot directly, take the money. Oh in shit! In thirty minutes, they're, they're in Kosovo. So there was a lot of, of those, uh, uh, lots of uh, interesting situation of, of that one too. So it was. Uh, uh, sometimes, like we say, we shit the pants. <laughs> Man, I I'm shitting my pants just listening to your stories, bro. <laughs> like, that's terrifying to think uh, of. Once we 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 went uh, we went to uh, pick up some uh, some uh, shipment from the national bank. Okay. And uh, yeah, so we couple of uh, big bags with uh, with the money and <laughs> just uh, my boss because I was the team leader uh, over there and uh, he told me, listen up, uh, put uh, bullets in the chamber. Be alert, be open. We have, uh, I just get goosebumps. We got, uh, we got, uh, yeah, we got a uh, call that maybe, maybe you guys can be attacked because you're uh, carrying a lot of money. I say, shit, I told the guys, uh, I told the guys, listen up, everyone, bullet in the chamber, be alert, and uh, just be alert and watch left and right like uh, everything can be uh, possible. Man, we are driving 180 kilometers from one city to another city. Oh my God. Uh, before that, we are just relaxed, put the radio, no. Radio, dead silence. These two guys. Full focus. Uh, was a, yeah, full focus. They went white because there was, uh, there was not like. Uh, they were new? Not but new, but <laughs> was a different kind of guy. Oh, <laughs> trial by fire. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So yeah, so nothing happened, thank God. But there's a, there's a couple of all these situations. Once the, once we, we dude, the cortisol alone build up in your body because of the stress of that drive was as, was more dangerous than what most people face their entire life. <laughs> yeah, one one time one time uh, we are driving like uh, we were supposed to to get uh, like 30 40 kilometers from a city to a city, uh -huh. and we are uh, small like a regional side, and we're trying to we are we are driving like 140 150 kilometers per hour mm. with a with a with a van mm. armored van, and uh, or from the other side another van was overtaking another van man we missed directly that was a directly we're gonna hit from uh from a, how you call it, from a car accident that was a certain death for everyone for those guys and for us too oh my God. 140 and he was running like 180 overtaking we just you haven't seen just we i think that the cars even slowly touched themselves my god man my god the, the stories you've got we, this is like an entire night just talking about this, man. Uh, and, yeah, you got a lot of them. And, and you go from this to Oman. 
<laughs> you go from this action to peaceful, relaxed, safe Oman, right? Yeah, yeah. I, I lots of. Uh, I'm not gonna talk to right now. Lots of things happen in my life, so yeah. it's, it's a big story. It's a lot of okay. stories and everything happened. So okay. the people who know me know a lot of. Okay. And after after a lot of um, a lot of shit over there on the Balkans, I say it's enough. Okay. It's enough. So I I explore. I get offer to work for um, setting up a new UFC gym in Oman. Okay. And I say. As I said to my wife, uh, fuck it. So I was going to try, got six months probation period. You when went I alone? Conceived. Yeah, I went alone. Okay. So I said, I, I didn't know anything about the Middle East. I didn't know anything about Oman. I just uh, Google a couple of things. And I said, uh, I'm enough of this shit over here. Politi politics, uh, lots of, lots of sure. shit over there. Sure. In yeah. So I said, I'm going to go and try. And... The, I think it's one of the best uh, decisions that I made. So I come to a really, really nice country. Of course. We set up a really, really nice training facility. One of, one of the best. Uh, so It really is, really, man. Really like I see the pictures you post and the videos and the classes. It's impressive what you guys are building up there. Yeah, yeah. So we built, uh, we built a very, very nice uh, uh, gym training facility with a, with a very good standard, everything mm -hmm. under one roof. So we got a huge cage, matting area, 30 back room, different bags. We got a studio for training. We got functional fitness training, conditioning for martial arts, uh, cardio, everything under one roof. How, big, how big is this place? Around 1,100 um, square meters. I got to come see this. Yeah, you need to come, bro. You need wow, to come. wow. Yeah. And, and, and uh, just a step back, if you don't mind me asking, did you have any MMA fights? before that time before coming to Oman and I think you did right yeah, yeah. I got okay. I told you I got uh, I got a couple of uh, boxing amateur fights I got a couple of uh, kickboxing fights but, uh, uh, MMA any MMA fights MMA yeah yeah so I got one uh, semi pro and a beer. before I come I think I had uh, six uh, yeah six uh, uh, a pro MMA fights so um just building up back and forth from uh, from from Macedonia all the way to Amman, uh, you ba and you basically you were fighting while working the security job. Yeah. So you'd be working your security job nights, shitting yourself in a car, crossing borders, carrying cash, and then the next day you wake up and you train and fight MMA. That's fucking crazy. Yeah. Plus family. Plus family, and and <laughs> your son was born. Before, much before coming to Amman then. Yeah, my son is born 2011. Mm -hmm. So I, I get married 2010 and all the time I just, uh, family, work and training. Plus I got a uh, running till today, two clubs in Macedonia. One is uh, MMA Academy, one is a judo club over there. Okay. A cooperation with judo, uh, a judo federation with, uh, with uh, jiu-jitsu guys over there, with a sambo federation because I'm a... Uh, uh, two times Macedonian combat sambo champion and two times uh, Macedonian national team member in combat sambo. You just forgot to mention that sambo champion as well. <laughs> oh my goodness, man! Oh my goodness! I was, it... very, I was the very first Macedonian on a on a combat sambo championship. Very first that ever uh, uh, been over there. So I lead the, the, the Macedonian national team over there. So, you you created you the blueprint, <laughs> basically. <laughs> it was hit yeah, or miss. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> When you come to the blueprint in Macedonia and the martial arts, we done a lot in Macedonia for that one too. Uh -huh. So in my city was the second city uh, in Macedonia. So I, I brought uh, BJJ in my city. I brought MMA in my city. Wow. From uh, yeah, so we start the first academy over there. That's Igor. Uh, Igor MMA. Yeah, Igor okay. MMA. So yeah, so we train on a couple of blankets instead of mats. We got only one bag oh. and two pairs of gloves. That's it. How we started. We, I built I build the whole gym out of nothing. So it was an aggress aggressive sleepover, pretty much. <laughs> yeah, so I went over, I went somewhere, I fought, I fight somewhere, get uh -huh. some money, buy bags, oh, buy wow. max, yeah. fight again, buy this one, buy this one. So we grew up, we grew up, my, my club in Macedonia, we grew up from nothing, from, uh, from two times, two persons, three persons in the gym till now, one of the most respected clubs in Macedonia in Judo and MMA. And how many members, like how many people train in this facility now? Right now, not too many people, okay. but it's a, it's, a, it's a small gym, but okay. uh, when, you, when you see how many champions we produce in wow. boxing, in kickboxing, in MMA, 
and, and a lot of people came out like judo jiu-jitsu my student uh become judo and jiu-jitsu champion in one week apart wow. one friday become judo champion wow. the next become a jiu-jitsu champion national champion forget camps forget all of this back to back and getting championships that's impressive yeah and, yeah, and really if I can ask, when you were fighting in MMA in Macedonia, the prize of the fights, right? Because you're saying like you would fight, get a bag or two added to the gym. So what was the prize? What were you getting paid for fighting in those crazy fights in Macedonia back then? Uh, for, for, for fighting, from fighting, uh, you don't get too much money. Right? Yeah, I, I figured. Yeah. So like r roughly like to get into a cage and throw fists with a guy. A lot of people think, man, yeah. I, I do it for the right number. But... I know that the right number wasn't existent, but it was what you can get uh, from that. Yeah, in the beginning on the Balkans, if you don't get in a big uh, promotions, you're not gonna get too much money. So 300, 500, 600 euros is the maximum over there from the small promotion. Yeah. I have luck with my coach to, to connect me to a big, uh, it's called Final Fight Championship, mm -hmm. which is Croatian based. And it's uh, like uh, yeah. one of the best in Europe. Now they moved to US and they are based, they are connected to UFC. And they got very professionalism. You have no idea. Same as UFC, bro. You go, you got, you've been treated like a king. You get paid good. You got wow. everything you want. So I, I was lucky. My first professional fight in MMA, I was on that show. They moved to from Croatia for the first time in Macedonia. Okay. And I was the underdog. I was, nobody knows me over there. I was 2013. This was your fight so against uh, Yorgos Vardis, the Greek. Yeah, yeah. Okay. The Greek guy. Okay. Yeah, so... Uh, uh, there was a uh, four Macedonians fighting on that show uh, so from all of the Balkans, very really nice fighters. Uh -huh. I was the last one, so nobody knows me. I nobody, love it. Okay. Yeah, nobody shit, uh, nobody heard anything about me. So uh, we, we first was a four uh, kickboxing fight, uh -huh. and, and there was a four MMA fight. So first was one of uh, of, of our of our Macedonian uh, kickboxing star. He lost unfortunately for, uh, by a knockout okay then another macedonian lost by a decision then mma a, a guy on 77 kilos before me and i was the, the last of macedonia so, so three guys lost before you lost yeah before macedonia uh -huh. against albanians against serbians against oh, no. Croatians, and me me the last one you have no idea first professional fight uh -huh. a huge show on a national tv and against Greek guy, and you know the history of Macedonian and Greek. Yeah. Oh my God, full full hole. Oh my goodness. Believe me, I never been scared in my life than anything else. Not shooting, than nothing. That that was the scariest. Moment I was gonna in my ask life. you. I was gonna say, like in comparison to your lifestyle before this, this shouldn't have scared you. But it's funny that you say that you were terrified from the situation. Yeah. So I went over there, hole like a 12, 15,000 people. Get wow. up on their feet, they're wow. cheering, they're cheering, they're cheering, they're screaming like crazy. And uh, big respect for my for my Greek opponent. I we get a we get a good fight for three rounds. We kill each other. Yeah. So we yeah. So 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 I, of, can I interrupt you there because you're not doing yeah. this fight justice. I watched this fight. Okay. I okay. wanted to get more taste of who is Risto. What is what is the the man behind Risto? And I watched this fight. I knew this was your first professional MMA fight in a big scene like this, because you come into the fight and they announce it zero, zero, zero wins, zero losses. Yeah. And you're even telling me before that you had three Macedonians that lost. And I felt watching that fight and the buildup that this was supposed to be a prep fight for Yorgos. Like this might have been something that they fixed up for Yorgos, knowing that you had the zero, zero track so that he can practice. But then you gave him hell. Like he was, I saw in that, in that fight, the first round, when he, he hits and you wrap around to his back and you grab onto him, he freaked out. He's like, fuck, <laughs> like they fucked up. My manager fucked up. He put me with the wrong guy. And that fight got serious after that. He, he gave everything and it was a three round war. I loved that fight. Yeah. It was super entertaining. I, if I may say it was one of your most entertaining fights because it was yeah. war, bro. And uh, your expression when they said the red corner, in the beginning, you're yeah. like, which, which fucking corner am I? I know you were thinking that because <laughs> in the beginning, you didn't cheer. They're like, red corner. Like, you looked, like, yes, motherfucker, red. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That, was yeah, that was epic. That was... When I went on that fight, bro, the first round, the first round, I felt like I had never trained in my life. 
Oh, like wow. I was prepared to fullest to fight 50 rounds. I felt like I had no cardio. My adrenaline killed me when adrenaline I dump. Country. You got the dump then. Yeah. Oh but, man. Yeah, but for, yeah. But then after that, after the first round, like okay. something else happened. I don't. I, I. I. don't feel. I don't. I can't remember any turn of my fight. When the fight finished, I told my friend, "Bro, when I can see my fight, I. Can, I can't remember shit. What's what's happened over there?" <laughs> I can imagine because man, I saw you in that fight. You had your hands up, low kick, and then swinging at like there was points in the fight where you're both swinging at each other. But you were yeah, very yeah. methodological. You know, like some of your fights, I've noticed you have a style that if I might say would, would make me think that you were a lot influenced by George St. Pierre because you have a shoot fighting style. You, you were timing for ducking under the, the right and going for the double leg is better than most people I've ever seen. Like you love that shit and you get people like crazy in that position. I like that. <laughs> but this wasn't this against Jorgos. It was war. You weren't planning a double leg. You got the back once and you took him down. That was nice. But the rest of the fight... I almost got an armbar. Uh, I get escape from, a, from that, a heel hook. That heel hook escape was beautiful considering that maybe you weren't doing that much jujitsu back then. Actually, wait. What, Not what? too much. That, that fight was what year? Uh, 2014. 2013. Okay. 13. 2013 so you did jiu-jitsu for two years <laughs> and you're escaping heel hooks <laughs> and yeah. uh, going for arm bars in an mma fight that's extremely respectable now but i i, I, rec I recommend one thing, one thing yeah one thing before, before 2013 before that fight on a on a, when uh when i was training that uh, back then on the on the beginning of 2013 there was i think january or february mm -hmm. i won adcc oh wow ADCC Macedonian Open Championship. There are fighters from Serbia, Bulgaria, Albania, Kosovo, right. and everywhere. I won uh, 60, uh, 66 kilos. I won golden medal uh, three fights until final with Amba and the fourth on golden point. In 2013. 13. So your second year of Jiu Jitsu. <laughs> 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 I need to see these fights, man. Because you know what? Listen, uh, I have to tell you, when, when I watched some of your MMA fights, and uh, I think your professional record is a total of eight fights, right? Yeah. So uh, watching some of your fights, I noticed like you do a lot of jujitsu in your MMA. Like your punches are sweet. You've got a nice low and high kick. You're actually like, you take advantage of... I saw your fight against uh, Marco Spiric um, yeah. in 2019. And what I liked about this fight is he was a lot taller than you. And yeah. you made him feel like the short guy in that fight. Just watching mm -hmm. that fight, he, he looked shorter than you, even though he was taller, because you were high kicking him. You know, not something you yeah. usually see a short guy. They go into the fight and they're, they're not thinking, I'm going to high kick the motherfucker. You are. That's the Risto uh, mindset that I like. So you threw him off his game, but then you submitted him, I believe, by armbar. Ambar, yeah. Yeah, and, and it was... Round and pound, round and pound, I see the possibility for Ambar, I just finish it. So, so to walk people through this, and I recommend people listening right now, if you're listening on the podcast uh, afterwards, check out his fight, uh, type Risto Dimitrov against Jorgos Vardis, and then this fight against Marco Spiric, because Marco Spiric was, it was like a Gracie seminar, that fight. I, I liked it because if, if I wanted to share with somebody what jiu-jitsu should look like in a street fight, I would share this video because he threw an overhand right, you ducked down, you took him down double leg, you got your way into mount, you side controlled him and gassed him the fuck out. Like he had an, uh, a guillotine hold on you, right? Yeah, well, it wasn't good, yeah. And, but it was, I, and it was shit. I saw you, you figured it was shit and you, like, you let him gas out on it a little bit, which was cool. Yeah. And uh, then you pretty much rode the guy for the round, got to mount, Beat the shit out of him and then arm barred him. It was beautiful. It was clean. Yeah, the last the last four guys that I fought is uh, they're all stand up fighters. Mm. So they they're all boxers, K boxers, K one fighters and everything. So that's why I just shoot for the legs, don't risk too much, mm -hmm. and take him to the ground. On the ground, it's a different story. Absolutely, so, yeah. absolutely. Uh, lots of before, like like uh, the, the the people that thinking that I'm a mostly judo and jujitsu guy. Yeah, and I surprised them on the stand up too. So. Yeah. Exactly. That, that's yeah, exactly sure. it. Like you controlled him and you you denied him on the stand up with the high kicks and the distance management, and and that's the cool thing. Like is seeing how you approach MMA. It's you're not a casual fighter. Like you're fighting quite a lot. And even before this, you had different fights. Uh, you're coaching in the UFC gym, which I'm sure is not an easy job. Like uh, being a person who started up a small business myself, not in uh, martial arts in in bike building. 
and understanding the time and hours you have to put into running and managing. To add to that, training for MMA fights, that's crazy. Like, how do you balance your life that way? It's a, it's a, it's a hard, but you can balance every day. Right. So if you, right. if you, if you transfer your time very good, and so like I, I said, we got family too, so we need to balance the, the work, the yes. training, and the family too. So, so it, it's hard, but it, it's manageable. So most of the time, I, I woke up like at 5 a.m. Mm-hmm. I got personal trainings like 6, 7, 8. I got some morning classes, only one class, sometimes in the morning at 10. Mm-hmm. Then I train till 11, 12. Mm-hmm. Then I come back a couple of hours. I spend with the family till four or five. Then I got again classes four, five, six, seven, eight. I finish at eight. I train again eight to nine, nine to nine thirty, and then just come back home. So you personally, you're training three times a day. Um, uh, every day, one. Uh, most of the time, two times a day. Two times a day, and okay. I, if, I, I if, train in the morning mostly strength mm-hmm. and technique at night. Morning strength technique at night. Interesting. All right. If I may ask you is, because MMA is not an easy route. A lot of people, they think of it and they have this romantic idea of MMA, right? Especially guys that they just get into jujitsu and they start thinking, oh, I got a few guys in armbar. I choked a few guys. They're like, let me try MMA. It's it's a rude awakening, right? The first jujitsu competition is a rude awakening, but the first MMA fight is swimming in deep water and drowning feeling. You know what I mean? So... Yeah. Why do you do it? Like, why do you continuously, like, do you have a plan or is it, what was the reason behind MMA for you? I just love the sport. Okay. When I start, like I told you, box, boxing, kickboxing, I went to a lot of competitions and all of this. Mm-hmm. And I, the MMA was starting, uh, like, a, a popping up and I say, I'm not going to cuddle on the ground. I don't like this sport. Okay, <laughs> okay. But, when I, yeah, so when I start trying it and uh, I just uh, loved it. I yeah. loved it. That uh, combination of, of, of uh, MMA. So I explained like this. Uh, the thing is a very demanding sport. It's one of the hardest sports in the world. Because Absolutely. Uh, if you're, uh, yeah. So if you're a boxer, you, you watch on your hands, nobody to punch you in the face and uh, evade and everything. If you're a kickboxer, hands and kicks, evade and uh, counter punch, counter kick, things like that. If you're a Muay Thai, same thing. You add um, kicks, punches, elbows, knees. If you're a wrestler, you're trying to take... Uh, some guy on the ground, Pin on the ground, mm. escape from, uh, yeah. If you're a jiu-jitsu guy, you take someone to the ground, uh, you, you work uh, position, submissions, uh, sure. every, all of this. Uh, and if you're doing MMA, bro, all of that. You have to worry about everything, so, exactly. Yeah, so I saw a lot of uh, uh, jiu-jitsu guys, uh, all respect for jiu-jitsu guys who transfer mm. to MMA. We got lots of guys who are really good, like Damian Maya and yeah. and uh, Kenzo Gracie and Hickson Grace and all of these guys who are pioneers. In a, in a MMA, but I saw lots of jujitsu guys, like you said, that think it's romantic, but they're trying when you get positions and get starting pounding on the ground. It's, it's, a, a, different, it's a different story. Absolutely. It's a very, you forgot, you forgot a lot of the things that you learned before. Yeah. You forgot when somebody punch you in the face. So I, I, I like that one because your mind in MMA need to work 300 miles per hour. You all the time, you need to, you need to plan three moves, three positions, uh, three counter positions. If you've been attacked, if you get punched, if you need mm-hmm. to escape this one, if you start punching, you need, it's uh, in your mind. It's like a like a like a huge highway with a lot of cars and just going up and down, up and up and down. It's a roller coaster circus. <laughs> yeah, that's, it's, uh, imagine like a roller coaster, but with uh, uh, twenty million, twenty million of of a roller coaster going well in the all loops. the time. So, so, so when you go into an yeah. MMA fight, like in the last, let's say, three fights you've had, do you go in with a game plan or do you go in preparing? Like, do you study your opponents? Yeah, yeah. Always, I'm studying my opponents and seeing, uh, uh, seeing the previous fights and everything. Okay. The last guy that I fought for for my belt, it's a, it's a, he's a, he's a, a like I said, a veteran in a, in a combat sport. Uh, uh, da- Darko has, Darko Knezhevich. Knezhevich. Darko yeah. Knezhevich has a combined boxing, kickboxing, K1, yeah. and MMA. He got hundred professional fights. Was he heavier than you? Because he looked uh, fucking yeah, heavier than you. We fought on the first time in my life I fought on 75. That was a 75. And how much do you weigh usually in fights? I, I, I fight featherweight on 66. Six, so, so he cut weight and then gained for that fight and you just, yeah. you just gained? I just went on 70, I was 73 kilos over there. 
not even yeah, seventy-five. Because watching that fight, when the fight first started, I'm looking. The camera angle was a bit far on the one, the video I saw on that. Yeah. I'm like, fuck, man, there's a there's a problem here. This is open weight. <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> why, why is that guy bigger than him? But impressive fight. So yeah, sorry to interrupt you. Continue. Yeah, like I said, uh, yeah, the guy, the guy was uh, was uh, was a uh, bigger than I just. Uh, the guy was uh, having a hundred professional fights. Hundred. Uh, 100 professional fights combined, boxing, Whoa. kickboxing, and MMA. Wow. The guy, is, uh, yeah, he's a very good knockouter, very uh -huh. good boxer. He fought in Europe against one of the best boxers in the world. And I was very, very cautious with that guy. Just went the perfect technique to take him to the round. And uh, I was watching all his fights. The guy was waiting, waiting. He got a very strong uh, cross yeah. and knock you out. If he catch you, he's going to knock you out for sure. So I just started for him. So I was just prepared, take down on the ground. You knew exactly so, yeah. how to how to time it, because like that, this is the shoot fighting that I was telling you. I saw is yeah. un understanding how dangerous his cross is. You opened yourself up to get it, and then you shot for yeah. the double leg. That, it was a big risk you took, but it paid off. It paid off. It paid off. I saw. I just fought. So every time I I just come back come back his fight I saw that he is going with a with a with a one uh, common technique so he's he's uh, preparing for for the cross yeah. and I saw that and I saw when uh, when uh, he was preparing he was uh, he, he 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 saw what's coming up mm -hmm. but he was like halfway to throw a punch and he stopped in the yes. middle and just was I just shoot for the legs and take him around yes and like you said I don't care how how heavy it is I have fought on open weight in uh, in a kickboxing, one of the guy, uh, my semi-pro fight, mm. uh, when I started doing uh, MMA, that was the time when I don't have anything, I don't know anything on the ground. Mm -hmm. The guy was eight and a half kilo heavier than me and on steroids. Uh -huh. I went, I, I, we went, we went, uh, we went, there was like a, like a preliminary card before the, the main fight. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and the, the, the guy was eight and a half kilos heavier than me. And, uh, he thought of, there was a lot of TVs and everything. Yeah. And they asked me, they asked me, uh, okay, Risto, he's eight kilos heavier than you. Do you accept the fight? <laughs> and I just set up with all of everyone. I said, fuck it. I came all the way here. I'm not going to go back for nothing. <laughs> <or else fight." laughs> I'm here. I'm here. Motherfuckers. <laughs> Yeah, weird, but come to fight. <laughs> nice, I love it. I love it. I don't, I don't, I don't care who's on the on the other side. How heavy it is, it's a fight. He got two hands, I have two hands. He got two legs, I have two legs. Uh, it's a fight, win or lose, I don't care. Uh, I never uh, go out uh, fr from a fight. So. I love it. I love it, man. So you you see yourself picking up more fights in MMA? Do you have like a a goal in mind, or you're just having fun? You're enjoying it? I just I just enjoying it for now. I'm I'm gonna try to 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 fight as much as I can uh, now because now it's uh, I'm a little bit a lot a lot busy in the gym. Not a, I'm sure. I'm a senior fitness and MMA coach. I have classes. I get PTs. I got lots of other work with the coaches and everything. So right. which is uh, yeah, it's a plus family and everything. But I'll try to do it. Uh, I hope so. I'm not gonna have uh, lots of injuries and everything. I'm gonna try as much as I can to fight until I retire. So. I, if I get to the to the to the highest uh, to the highest as I call the promotions, let it be. But till now, I'm just gonna fight and I have fun. Man, I, I love the attitude that you have, and like this is a perfect opportunity to to change gears into something I wanted to talk to you about as well. And I think a lot of people will uh, will benefit from listening to you about this. It's I call it now the Risto mindset. Okay, <laughs> it's because there's very few guys that have this. Uh, let's say these ingredients that you have, uh, a tough upbringing, at the same time, like some people, there's plenty of people living in tough upbringings, but they don't end up doing what you're doing and grinding the way you are and all of this. So it's, if you can talk to us a little bit about what makes you tick, like what is this mindset that makes you wake up in the morning? What, what are you thinking? Are you thinking about outworking? Are you ambitious? What is it that drives you every day to do all of this shit and fight MMA? And oh, by the way, do a Spartan challenge <laughs> on the side. Yeah. Yeah, that's that, the spot. I, I, I tried 2017 the Spartan race and I, I really like it. It's a good, uh, good training. It is. It's, it's crazy. A challenge. Mm. Yeah, it's really nice. I finished this year. Uh, last year, I finished uh, the three races, the Trifecta and qualified for the World Trifecta Championship in Sparta, Greece. Crazy. 
So yeah, so I like the Spartan uh, race. It's a very very challenging uh, race. Uh -huh. It's a, it's another like a just run. You got lots of obstacles, fun obstacles, and challenging obstacles. You need to think a lot and everything. So just yeah, I like it. But uh, when I woke up in the morning, I, I just uh, want to to make most of of the of my day. So like uh, like I said, I, I I want I don't want to stay in one place. I want just to go improve, 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 and I'm working hard for that. Mm -hmm. And I'm gonna work hard hard for that. I love combat sports and I love what I'm doing right now. Mm -hmm. So I like I said in Macedonia, I was uh, having a day job just to support my 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 love, what I like the 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 sport, the combat sports and everything. Right. Uh, right right now i mean uh, like i told you i'm working for ufc gmo which is a, a state of art facility with a great team with a great person mm -hmm. we are I'm, uh, uh, and i'm doing what i love so the the thing i'm doing right now it, it's a hard but i don't see it as a job i i see it as a hobby i love it so when you go over there you teach somebody else to do to punch and how to do it and everything and i train lots of people and i'm bringing lots of people in dubai mm -hmm. for fights for amateur fights in mma in boxing and, and uh, muay thai and kickboxing i like it uh, when uh, i i laugh when i go to grad process uh, when i start uh, holding the classes it's like uh, like this passing by like nothing wow. three or four or five uh, hours in a row right uh it's like uh, passing by like nothing like uh when i say when you when you enjoy something what you uh, work is yes. not a work absolutely so that's it for me it's a, yeah for me it's a perfect I, I don't i don't see it uh that much hard or challenging on everything and uh, after that i have like four or five hours in a in a row personal training in classes and screaming to uh, on everyone <laughs> and then you train one and a half hours so so I, I I still have the energy to do it, and I laugh. Like I say, I laugh what I'm doing, mm -hmm. and uh, especially in Oman, we got lots of challenges because when you when we arrived in Oman, I was the only MMA fighter, and it was just a few people to, to know what MMA was in uh, in uh, in Oman. We changed the fitness industry and the martial arts industry in Oman from a scratch. I'm sure so, you did. Yes. Here, yeah, so me as 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 an athlete, I I'm uh, I'm having to make uh, I'm telling to my uh, students lead by example. So first, I go compete. I show them that we can do it. Mm -hmm. Then, then uh, I, I I encourage them to, to 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 compete and train as much as we can. So by now by now we've done a lot. Like I told you, we win a lot of first time jujitsu medals. Judo medals, you know, I, I my student in judo after seven, eight months is the first Omani who won international judo medal in a competition for Oman. So wow. we, yeah, so we 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 just uh, we I think we are the only gym that competes in all of these sports: judo, jiu-jitsu, boxing, kickboxing, MMA, Spartan races, marathon races, uh, obstacle races, whatever we find in a sport. That's hiking, incredible. Every, that's that's what we, that's what makes it exciting for you as well. Like just hearing you talk is like. A lot of people, you hear them complaining about their job, their life. It's too difficult. It's too this. And then I just, I hope they, they're listening to you because it's, this is evidence for you that if anything, if you truly enjoy and, and this is something you worked hard to get to, right? It's not just something you fell in your lap and you're doing it. You worked hard to get into this position because you love it so much and understand that you didn't start from easy. You were building up from blankets in, in Macedonia to fighting to get punching bags. Fast forward 11 years from there until we can talk okay, about I'll, I'm going to tell you one thing in my life uh, so you can understand better, bro. In my life, I never, gain, uh, I never been given to me anything like take it. Everything in my life, I need to work for it hard. Even I get that feeling. Was, yeah, even when I was a kid, my father didn't teach me how to ride a bike. Mm. I just I, I just feel 55 times from my bike for the first time and I learned how to ride a bike by myself. My father and my mother doesn't know how to swim, mm. so I didn't. Uh, nobody teach me how to swim. I went one day to the to the to the pool in uh, in my city and I said, uh, "You piece of shit, jump! You either gonna swim or you are gonna drown." Nice. I jump over there and I start swimming. So the survival stick is like that. Even everything in my life, I work as a shit. I, I never. Uh, I have always progressed in my life, right. but I work hard. A lot of, a lot of, uh, how called, uh, uh, a lot of uh, ups and downs. Mm -hmm. But I always say, never quit, never surrender. Just look forward and just go and go and go and go. Never stop.
I like that mindset, man. You're the crazy kid in the pool beating the shit out of it just to start swimming. And, and, <laughs> and, and that's sometimes, yeah. that's the attitude you need in life, right? Like some people, they, they, they get excited about something and they feel that butterfly, you know, like that feeling when you first try jujitsu or judo and you get that feeling in your stomach, like this is, this, why does this excite me, right? Some yeah. people, they feel it, they discover it, they're lucky. They continue in it as a passion that might lead to a career, but then they get difficulty. And that's when most people yeah. fall apart. Yeah, and the it thing takes. Is, bro, yeah, the thing is, uh, sorry to interrupt you. The thing is, in life, in life, in nothing easy, nothing easy. I say it like this when I talk with my students. Also, I'm a certified life coach, and I talk with lots of people helping uh, to. Good to know. To over, yeah, to uh, 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 overcome some of their things. So I'm telling you, uh, if you, if the life, if life was easy, we're not really gonna, we're not gonna born with uh, crying. We're not gonna born with crying. We're gonna born with laughing. So the life is like from the that. day we, we get from our uh, mother's womb, life is getting hard. So you get from the commodity of your mother, and whatever other you need to fight. It's like a jungle. We're constantly going through a lot of just uh, to go. So mo most of the people, when they, uh, whatever, it's, it's a personal, it's a job, or it's a sport like jujitsu, MMA, on the first difficulty, they quit. Yeah. For me, for me, uh, and I'm telling, I'm encouraging my students, for me, I laugh when it comes difficult. Mm -hmm. I laugh when it's coming a lot of uh, people to bring me down. That's when the fight starts. I'm just it. giving me energy to go more and more, do more and more, and never stop. And that's how I overcome everything in my life. I love it, man. Like that. This is this is exactly what I knew will happen by me talking to you. I I don't even know you. Like literally, man. I know you through social media. We bumped into each other before, but we never had a conversation like this. But I have it written on show notes. The Risto mindset, because I I get this vibe from you, and I felt people that are listening will like and appreciate to hear this in their face, undeniably, without apologies. The real the reality of it, right? Because. I also believe that in life, if if you have a, an easy life, you should be fucking worried. Because if you yeah. if you wake up and go to sleep and had no difficulty that day, you should be very fucking worried yeah. right now. Right? There is no easy life, bro. There is no easy life. You know what? The thing is, there is no easy life when you look at it totally. But some people are living an easy life now and they don't see the total picture. So they think life is easy. But what that that's means... That's the worst. Yeah, that's the scary part that's because... Those people are going to get hit from life very hard. 100%. 100%. And, and I hope they listen to this and start working that muscle, that mindset of never give up and, and appreciate and love difficulty because that's what makes you better. It's not comfortable, but if comfortable was good for you, uh, coffins wouldn't be cushioned. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it, it, it's, you need difficulty to get better in life. And, and that's something that I really appreciate talking to you about with this. I, I, wanna, I wanna also just riff off of this before we wrap up the interview is, what's in the future for Risto? What, what do you have going on? What are things that you'd like the audience to know about you? Um, how can they discover you? Like I said, um, uh, right now I'm based in Oman, and okay. uh, I'm a th third year here in Oman. I love this country. I love these people. I love this facility when I'm working. Uh, the management and the owners and my team, it's, uh, it's a one of a kind. So we, we gathered very nice team, very nice people. For, uh, I, have, I can say uh, the facility is one of a kind. The students and the people over here is one of a kind. So I love working here. I just progress. Uh, I was uh, working as an event coordinator, so I'm doing a lot of fitness events uh, for the gym all around uh, Oman. Nice. And I'm uh, yeah. So now I'm uh, I'm uh, working uh, together with the GM, with the general manager, and uh, uh, one of our uh, over there. So we are doing uh, fitness events, and I'm a senior fitness and uh, mixed martial arts coach. So uh, right now uh, I'm holding lots of classes, plus like I told you, lots of in the, uh, with the coaches and uh, trying to progress and uh, how to grow the gym and everything. Okay. Uh, we work, uh, we work hard. Uh, we bring uh, fitness and martial arts uh, uh, in Oman on a different level, and we're gonna try to grow more and more. I, I compete a lot, and now I'm uh, I'm pushing my students to compete now to to bring. Uh, Omani guys uh, for uh, for uh, to to grow in this. That'll sport. be nice to see, yeah. Yeah, so yeah, so they will. I have lots of of, of my students. Uh, one of my boxing students is uh, right now is two zero in uh, in boxing, and I got um, Omani student who is uh, 
uh, 4-0 in Muay Thai. I got the first Romani student who won a, uh, won a judo medal uh, for Oman. He totally went on a, on a reception in the Ministry of Sports and everything over here. That oh, must yeah, be exciting, so, man. Yeah. That's yeah. amazing to be part of. You're like, uh, how can I say, the godfather of this scene right now. And, and it's uh, it must be a beautiful, rewarding feeling as well. Yeah, it's a very good feeling, bro. It's something for the first time and you, you see how it's growing and growing and growing. And now it gives me more energy to, to push it and to grow and more and more and more and more. So I got lots of uh, plans for, the, for this country and for this gym. So I want uh, this uh, gym and we, went, we want to, to grow as, as a big sport MMA. Mm -hmm. uh, and together with the MMA, Jiu Jitsu, Judo, and all the combat sports over here, make it uh, one of a kind over here. And just uh, uh, like I said, I got uh, bigger ambitions than, than everything. I hope so one day we're going to grow up to a management position, big management position, nice. and make it like a three or four uh, UFC gyms over here because it's a, it's a demanding sport. It's a fast growing sport everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. A, lot of, uh, a lot of kids and lots of people are starting to train over here. So I hope so when I, I'm going to woke up one day over here in Oman, maybe after 20 years, uh, maybe a CEO or CFO, whatever, we're going to be on a, on a USB gym or like a 10, 15 uh, USB gyms in Oman. And we're going to bring the, the sport. That's my, that's my dream. I, I, I won't be lot. surprised, man. Honestly, just hearing what you're saying and the dedication, you know, it's, it's for, I'm sure you can agree with me. When you put that much dedication to a passion, doors open. You know, they like out of nowhere, the doors just open and things fall into place. And I, I really, I, I wish you all the success. And I, I hope to see everything you're saying come true because you're the right person <laughs> to do it in, in everything that I'm seeing. It needs a guy like you. I'm sorry to say it needs a crazy guy that's willing to take all that and loves it. And that actually like is the right influence. You have the right mindset for a fighter. You have not just for a fighter, for a fighter to learn from. Because I feel like some people, they're great fighters shit coaches you know yeah. uh, they're they're talents they just don't know how to translate it to other people i feel like you you have you've you've even gotten certification in life coaching you're saying so you're ready to transfer it to other people so it's it's you've got the right ingredients to make it happen i i would be remiss if i did not ask you this like considering coronavirus and the situation we're in around the world and you're saying events management and a ufc gym that requires a lot of people to be there and interacting how is this affecting your business and what are you doing about it? Like, do you have things in mind? Yeah, uh, uh, like, uh, you know, it's affecting a lot of uh, gyms all around the world. It's not of course. just our, our gym. Our gym right now, it's, um, it's uh, shut. So yes. we are closed right now. So, but we're trying uh, together with the gym manager and the coaches, uh, we're trying to to put it as much as we can. So we got lots of uh, live training. We got our instructional videos, Good. putting in life for the, for the, for the students and uh, trying all the time, uh, uh, giving them equipment to train at home, encourage them to train, to stay active. Uh, we got lots of nutritional advices on our social media and everything. Okay. So we're trying to, to, to keep it as, as much as we can active for, from our homes and from everywhere. So, and, and to keep them to be, training and everything. So I, all the time when I'm uh, at home, I'm just thinking how I can give them uh, exercise, shadow boxing, technical, anything. Uh, I, I'm 24-7 for my students open and for anyone who wants uh, any advices. So I'm 24-7. I'm, I'm some, uh, taking uh, short video, show them some techniques, show them what to do. They send me all the time on Instagram a lot of um, videos. Hey, coach, is this good? Is this good? And I'm doing right. I'm doing good. So all the time we're trying to keep it alive until this uh, this corona shit uh, pass by and we come back in a, in a in a normal way so i hope it's gonna uh, gonna gonna all of us man finish. all of us like for, for somebody like you that's been so active the last god knows how long to suddenly go from that to this i imagine for you like for for me for the guys that all of my guys that we train together Something's missing, man, in our day. It's just like yeah. not, not being able to train, not being able to interact. It's, it takes a lot out of you, man. A lot of, lots of people going crazy, bro. After a couple, two, three, four weeks locked up, and you know, you, you, yeah. you're used to it. Yeah, you're used to it to train like two times, three times plus classes and everything. It's, uh, it's, uh, you're going to go crazy. So, yeah. Yeah. so yeah. most of the time I'm here, I'm using, uh, I'm, uh, I'm training with my wife, I'm training with my son. I teach nice. a lot of techniques. Nice. So my son, is, I'm very happy that he's training everything with me. He is uh, getting he he gets the second stripe in uh, BJJ. He's a uh, yellow belt in uh, judo uh, in judo. He's training Muay Thai, uh, boxing, kickboxing, MMA with me. So 
Oh, uh, and, be- and before this, and I hope he's going to continue with that. So I'm, uh, I'm feeling the time. Uh, that's a blessing. It, it, that's a blessing for you to be able to commit all of this you've accumulated. And it's like a gift given to you in a short period, I hope, where you can funnel it to your son as well during that period. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. cool. So, yeah, the, the, for me, for me, I love what I'm doing. I love to compete. I love to, 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 to do all of this. But when you transfer some of your knowledge to somebody else, mm-hmm. that's what I'm telling to my students. A lot of my students telling me, hey, coach, one day I'm going to knock you out. I say, no problem. Knock me out. <laughs> for me, for me, for me, if somebody of my students beat me up in a, in a sparring or even, even in a fight, mm-hmm. which is, uh, I don't know, uh, some of them, they are, they are uh, like uh, they say, uh, it's disrespectful fight to your coach, but I like it. So if mm. my student, somebody who I, I teach from scratch mm. and he knock me out on a training or even even a fight, for me, it's mm. not a defeat or it's not a, not. for me, I will love to, I will, I, will, I will be more than happy because I teach somebody better than somebody teach me. So I teach somebody better than somebody teach me. I would love to. I would love to. I said, well, if you knock me out, I will more than happy. And they're like confused. Why, coach? Because I teach you better than somebody teach me. So just be my guest. Only Risto Dimitro will say something like this. <laughs> Want in, invite. I wish you can knock me out, but you can't. Yeah. <laughs> That's the fucking problem. You say it like a motivational coach, but I know deep down inside you're convinced they fucking can't. <laughs> That's what I'm telling you. Uh, if he's saying I will knock you out one day, I say, yeah, you're going to knock me one day, but until day, that day, your ass is mine. <laughs> and when I wake up, <laughs> I'll be back, bitch. <laughs> yeah. He, 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 I told him, if, if you punch me and I fall on the ground, everyone can be punched and fall on the ground. Yeah. Well, if I fall on the ground, be very sure I'm not going to get up. If I get up, run. <laughs> exactly. You better take me out for a while. <laughs> Yeah. Listen, man, I, I love it. I really appreciate your time. I think, honestly, I'm so happy you got on this. I'm so happy you took the time to do this interview because uh, for me, forget just the audience listening to this. For me, myself, I feel like I learned a lot from you and I have a new appreciation for what you do. And I really, I'm now a supporter of Omani MMA scene, of what you're doing. And man, I will be coming, I hope, I really hope this virus just gets controlled very soon so we can all go back to normal lives. I come down, we hang out in Amman, and when you come down to UAE, we hang out here as well. Thank you, for Thank you, bro. You almost, you're always welcome. Your gym, our gym is your gym. Whatever you, you want, you're your friend. Every day, you will be my guest here in Amman. We can go around, we can uh, train together. We can Absolutely. Do everything will, will be my pleasure. So I hope, like I said, this shit going to end up very soon, so we yeah. can come back to normal. Uh, and uh, yeah, uh, like, uh, I'm, I, like I told you, I love what I'm doing. Uh, I'm going to pro- uh, continue uh, with, with, with the same and even now after this even bigger pace and everything so we, I'm, I'm going to I'm having big uh, ideas and big plans for Roman we're going to grow this sport uh, and I hope a lot of kids we're going to come to a combat sports because I'm telling yeah. I'm telling from my students and from myself I know that uh, uh, combat sports teach you to honor honor this respect Yes. and uh, discipline so whatever you do that's going to bring a lot of uh, kids to the straight path so it I changes hope so your that, life yes yes so i hope so this is gonna gonna uh, I'm, I, that's my my dream to grow on a in a huge uh, combat uh, sports community over here mma judo jiu-jitsu whatever it is it's uh, i love uh, all the combat and respect all the combat sports all the sports is all but combat sports especially so I hope so. We're gonna grow it in a huge, and one day we're gonna we're gonna be we're gonna leave a big trace. Whatever we are here on the Middle East or somebody else, we're gonna leave a big trace, and it is a lot of uh, thousands of kids gonna train this. I'm That's sure. my dream. I'm sure they will, man. And I honestly wish you all of the luck with this. I'm just taking a look here on uh, on Instagram just to see if uh, if we've got any questions. If anybody here on Twitch right now has any questions, now's the time. But I. I have a question of my own, something that'll be uh, useful for people. In this time that everybody's stuck at home, they're moving a lot less than before, they're training a lot less than before. What health and nutrition advice would you give them? What is something that you're actively thinking during this time? The thing is, the thing is, right now it's the most important while we're stuck up at home to, to, to have a good diet and good nutrition. So to eat good, it's very, very, because now... What's, what's very, eating good for you? What do you call eating good? 
Uh, eating good, is, like I said, not on a, not a, <laughs> fast food or KFC, not for sure. Right. So a lot of people now they 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 they're choosing this um, uh, fast food and everything. So. But but you uh, think you think these days they're choosing fast food? I feel like it's high risk food now. <laughs> Yeah, very risk, yeah. very risk. Uh, so yeah, so it's very, very like a, a for me it's very easy uh, to eat clean. It doesn't demand too much. Good. So like me, for me in the morning there's a cup of fried eggs, brown mm -hmm. toast, uh, and that's it. That's my breakfast or sometimes oats and fruits okay. uh, with a, with a, with a, with one uh, uh, scoop of uh, protein drink mm -hmm. for lunch. Just uh, boiled food and uh, grilled food, okay. grilled meat or whatever it is. Uh, no, no, I, as, as uh, I'm evading bread, uh, mm. I'm, I'm evading uh, sweets as much as I can. And nice. at night with my wife, we're training for one or two hours, then just uh, one banana, one protein scoop, and that's it. And that's gonna, gonna uh, keep you, keep your weight and your, uh, your uh, muscle mass uh, in, a, in, a, in a good condition, not gonna get too much fat and everything. Depends how much you train and everything, but exactly. the yeah. food is is this different from what you usually uh, your usual diet when you're training and working normally uh to be honest when i'm training and working a lot i eat all, everything almost everything you need it you need the calories to stay uh, alive man. yeah yeah so but now well, I, even even uh when i'm training i'm trying to eat clean so not fried food uh, i never uh, sometimes once maybe on two weeks uh, some some uh, junk food or uh, or pizza or whatever right but most of the time uh, me and my family were trying to keep it on a healthy food uh, not fried food uh, not uh, fried food uh, not bread too many not too sweet too much so uh, okay. overall my, my my food is good so i i recommend the people to do all the time because the food right. It's not a it's not a pleasure like we the people are saying that it's like a pleasure we are we are right. uh, living no it's a it's a, it's a fuel our body it's like a like a car like an engine mm -hmm. and if you fill it with a with a good fuel you're gonna get good results when I eat uh, clean I feel more energy for training and more uh, energized for, for for everything so right so right. simple if you put your car uh, shitty fuel you're gonna get shitty speed if you put a a nice fuel, some in a good oxygen, you're gonna get a lot of energy. That's it. simple with the food. That's it. I, I like that analogy, and I'm, I'm I'm I got a smile on my face because I'm a food lover, <laughs> and and when <laughs> and I have a comeback for this ready for what bro, bro every every Arab it's a food lover. It can't be otherwise, bro, man. Come on, we would not have the beautiful curves we have if we didn't love food. But listen. Whenever anybody tells me that it's like the human body is a car and it needs the correct fuel, I say yes, but cars also need lubrication. <laughs> and we need <laughs> fat to lubricate, motherfucker. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. This is the only way. Yeah, but don't put too much, too much uh, lubricant. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Your, your, your car will steam up. That's what happens, man. Yeah, yeah. That's what happens. But that, that's, yeah, this is the danger of coronavirus. I'm not afraid of the virus. I'm afraid of the amount of people gaining weight and losing the good habits that they have every day. I'm one of them, yeah, and I'm trying so hard to just maintain. The thing is, the people with the, with the food, the food when you have a bad lifestyle with the food, I know that it's, it's tasty and everything. But after you're having a bad uh, lifestyle and bad uh, diet, yes. after that, it will trigger a lot of other uh, health problems, which is... Uh, Absolutely. Uh, yeah. Like, now, it, it, right now, for the coronavirus, it's essential to eat good and healthy yes. uh, to, to yeah. boost your immune system because that even if you get the virus, you can fight uh, uh, right back. Mm -hmm. yeah, even I heard a couple of many of the cases that, 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 that uh, unfortunately end up uh, bad was uh, people uh, with a health problem and with overweight. In yeah. Macedonia, I heard about, yeah. Absolutely. So the thing is, yeah, this is triggering a lot of things. I got a couple of uh, students that are having over, overweight and training to, to lose some of the weight. And uh, I had a student who was uh, 27 years old who uh, never trained in his life and mm -hmm. bad, like all time burgers, bread, sweets, mm -hmm. fried food and everything. He got 27 years old, 135 kilos. Wow. Uh, diabetes, uh, high mm. blood pressure, mm. and tumor get out uh, taken out from his head. So brain oh, tumor. Wow. Uh, that's all connected with a, with a bad uh, yeah. food and that lifestyle. Absolutely. So that's uh, the, that's uh, the, the people need to consider that uh, the sport is not just a Absolutely. sport to go and kill each other. It's a, it's a health, and the food is a health. Exactly. How better? 
yeah, how better do you, you're gonna gain more, you're gonna you're gonna have even better performance in the sport, yep. but in, in life too. So you're gonna have better health and everything. That's very so, true. I, I think that's a that's a nice message for people is that MMA, it seems violent, or jujitsu and or judo. They seem like aggressive martial arts, but they're a gateway to a healthy life. Because in order to get better, you start looking at the small tweaks that make you better. And quickly you get to, to food. Quickly you start getting to how much water you're drinking so you're not dehydrating and gassing out. You'll quickly arrive at the things that'll make your life a little bit better. So I think that's amazing advice for people out there. And I, I appreciate that from you, man. Um, I'm going to wrap it up on the stream, but hang out just a second, just so we can uh, wrap things all together, all right? Thank you guys for listening in. I appreciate all of you. I'll catch you guys soon.